pictures are like they're not normal pictures. They're like he has his underwear all the way down to like the pube line. But like just the, the okay. So when the guy, when this lieutenant governor in Tennessee is not leaving uh, heart emojis or fire emojis, he's leaving comments. But they're really like you know. You can turn a rainy day into rainbows and sunshine was one of his comments. Right. So this dude's gay. As much okay. And he's trying to make sure that there's, you know, all this anti gay legislation getting passed there in Tennessee. Believe me. I and love- so they're like, Sir, how do you respond to this? And he's like, Oh, I'm a very prolific commenter on social media. I'm prolific. Like that's any kind of explanation. So he did comment on it and saying it that it was him. Well, of course. Okay. It's his it's his handle, but LT Gov McNally with yeah. a blue check. I understand that. It is, believe me, I love. A he didn't clo- deny it was him. I'm just saying, I love a closeted Republican as much as the next guy. But it, it, these guys probably have social media handlers, don't you think? Because I think someone could be like, he could have hired. But then an he intern could have, no. and He would have said that. He would have said uh, it was someone well, running well, my social media well, account. That's why that I had to commented. clarify. I had to ask but if he. They didn't say that. He said it, he just likes to comment. And build people up on social media. He enjoys interacting with constituents and Tennesseans of all religions, backgrounds, and orientations on social media. That's their, yeah. Yeah, he just wants to outlaw the way they live their lives. That's all. He loves interacting with constituents. It's just a lot of them. He wants to make sure they can go to jail, too. I hate it. Like the He must not know that they don't have phones in jail. He's like the dirty old mans that you avoid in the club, but like the the young hot Republicans, the ones that have like the the sweaters tied around their neck. Oh. <laughs> this guy follows this kid's Instagram, and then he also I shouldn't say kid, he's twenty, but much younger than the lieutenant governor of Tennessee, and he also follows one of his fan pages. Only fans or a fan? It says a fan page. I don't know. This, dude, but the dude I pulled up, if it's the same guy, he doesn't look like a model or anything. He just looks like a thought. Like he, yeah, it's just thirst traps. He's just posting. I mean, he's living in Knoxville. He's not living the high life. But, but. the guy doesn't even have like multiple followers. Like he, I mean, he's or, got the lieutenant governor of Tennessee on yeah. board. If, he I, said he's never met the lieutenant governor, but they've been online friends since 2020. He says, I hope that he can extend that kindness by trying to make sure that no laws are passed to hurt anyone like me. <laughs> yeah, he's only got like... <laughs> oh, sure. Well, he will. He'll make sure to pass some laws. I mean, the lieutenant governor obviously doesn't pass laws, but, you know. He's Let's a, say the he's governor... Of the, he's right there. Mm, yeah. Wow. He's like... The, That's pretty wild. So when something like this happens, who just goes back? Did the, did the guy that he was commenting on say that he was commenting on his... Uh, photos or did someone go back and look at his like instagram stuff i think somebody said something about it and then like the local paper got into it or something and (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know but and again there's no shame on that side anymore so nobody has to explain anything this guy just go yeah i will i don't care i like commenting yeah Yeah. i'm a prolific social media commenter you know me (laughs) Thirty five hundred. he liked the dl I, i also like that he was using he was just saying no cap and stuff like that. Yeah, he's talking like the kids. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Someone yeah. is is doing his Instagram. No, then he didn't. If that's the case, he said it. It's him <laughs> calling the guy a bad bitch and things like that. I mean, you know, <laughs> this guy really wants to meet this kid. He just can't come right out and say it. You know, if he had DM'd him, and and this this dude is not going to go. Oh yeah, he's been blowing me up for a while. But this is going to get this kid more followers. Yeah, I was going to say, he's only got like 3,400. So this guy, the lieutenant governor, got him quick. <laughs> like he, When he posted the thirst trap, that means his algorithm was already on like shirtless, pube, oh, yeah. pube-showing dudes. Mm-hmm. And they're like, Ooh, who's this guy? <laughs> the old pube-showing dudes. <laughs> it is. You, you always know the ones I guess that are, young pube-showing yep. dudes. The, the just before you get to some staff, I know what some shaft. <laughs> I know what they're doing because the guys show... Just a little bit of pubes, but not too much. Like, it's like four pubes. And I'm like, uh uh-uh. You're trying to get people. Can you just show four pubes? Like, you get. Is that a thing? You, because it's like right at the. That would require tweezers. Yeah. Right when it starts to get a little shadowy. Like, right when you start, the the hair starts to turn real dark. I'm like, uh uh. You a thirst trap. Well, they're dealing with this kind of thing out in Wadsworth. You know, they're doing a drag queen story hour or something out in Wadsworth, and the city approved the permit. 
But you know Wadsworth. They're going to have all kinds of trouble out there. Mm -hmm. They're like, we just are going to do a, you know. My thing is because now Drag Queen Story Hour has become a movement to, to, to um, prevent discrimination or whatever. But I'm not clear how that got started. How did that even become a thing? I mean, they drag- were coming to schools. Drag queens were yeah, but were wh- how, but w- what was the first place to do that? Who thought, hey, we should have drag queens come to school and read to kids? It probably started in I don't know. I would guess a very gay because I don't think anybody, <clears throat> I don't think anybody, even in the drag community, thought that it was going to get to be like a f- political flashpoint, where now places are doing it, and every place they do it, by the way. You know, even if these ha- places have a permit, even if the city goes, yeah, that's fine. They get a bunch of proud boy dopes or whatever showing up, you know, armed to the teeth, and then everybody f- gets freaked out. So I don't know how this is going to uh, lay out in Wadsworth. I think you can probably roll the dice and figure out, but it seems like a lot of these places now just do it because they're like, well, I mean, it is a First Amendment issue, but um, a lot of these places do it just to get it done. Rather than, you know, nobody wants to get hurt when they're out at these places. But I don't know. I, I just wasn't, I was thinking about it because you see these stories all the time now. And I'm like, how did that become a thing? I'm glad I got it. I mean, we didn't have Drag Queen Story when I was a kid. Hell. No. I mean, kind of. You went to mass. Yeah, that is true. The yeah, priests were wearing the priests, the dresses. They had the cassocks and the whole thing. And yeah. even me, I was an altar boy in good standing for a long time. Mm-hmm. I would wear makeup. But I did tuck. Because I felt that that you know, there's a lot of sitting and standing and kneeling and the whole thing. You know, most of uh, it's, uh, you know, Catholic Church has a lot of calisthenics, and so I thought, well, maybe the tucking is going to make it easier for me to uh, do what I need to do. Here's some Wadsworthians. Instinctively recognize this as an unacceptable harm to children. I don't consider myself a bigot, but I do consider myself a protector of children. If a woman can, you know, break- nobody does consider themselves a bigot. If you got up there and were like, I'm a bigot. And here's what I don't like. I respect that. Everybody goes, I'm not racist, but yeah. I don't consider myself a bigot, but I had everybody who's not like me. Right. And also, if you consider yourself a protector of children, children, why why start with I don't consider myself a bigot. I'm a protector of children and I use bigotry to get that done. Well, then go vote ag- <laughs> go vote against repealing child labor laws then. Yeah, right. <laughs> Go vote not, against. Not trying to chi- protect them that way. Go vote against child marriage. Uh, no, no, not that one. Not not trying to do that. Oh, not one. that one. Oh. We're trying to protect kids from things that aren't threats. I see. That's how you look like. A, it's a like the episode of The Simpsons where Lisa's trying to s- explain to Homer uh, that she's got a, a rock that keeps tigers away, and she's like, "You don't see any tigers around, do you?" And he's like, "All right, I'm gonna buy your rock because it's a uh, it's about immigration." Uh-huh. And they're all like, you know, talking about how they use illegal immigration as a distraction method to uh, from real problems. And they go, and then Lisa explains that uh, I have this rock that repels tigers. And Homer's like, yeah. And he's like, how does it work? And she's like, it doesn't. But you don't see any tigers around, do you? <laughs> and he's like, right. Lisa, I'd like to buy you a rock. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't mm-hmm. want any tigers around me either. Mm-hmm. Man, they caught a big tiger that they found out was on cocaine. Yeah. Was that in the wild? Near Cincinnati? Cincinnati. Yeah, and it wasn't a Bengals player. Bill Squire, March 31st and April 1st at um, the Funny Stop. Funny Stop. <laughs> Most important. <clears throat> Brain fart there. <laughs> yeah, they found this huge tiger that had gotten out of some guy's apartment. <laughs> That's why it was on cocaine. I'm not Big, even going to ask. It's, it's over at the Cincinnati Zoo now. You're not going to ask what? Like, who has a tiger in their apartment, and how could they keep a tiger in their apartment? Uh, it's I, a cokehead. It's yeah. probably, you had it on a leash, you know. I mean, it's was out it of his tiger? I thought it was just like a big cat. Serval cat is what yeah, they call yeah. it. <laughs> Do you, but it was like a big cat. They, they, they thought it was a leopard. Mm-hmm. And so now it's it's at the zoo. But it's a big cat. That's a good way to get people to come to the zoo, though. 
You want to go see the cocaine tiger? <laughs> the cocaine cat. Hey, hey, golly, will you look at that? Get down here, everybody. It's a cocaine cat. <gasps> so after they uh, removed the big cat uh, from the tree it was in, they took it back to the Cincinnati Animal Care Shelter. Suffered a broken leg during the capture. And it's standard operating procedure to do a toxicology report on a loose animal. And so they just did that. They probably weren't expecting to find anything. Oh, maybe it's malnourished. Oh, right. They're like, it's got cocaine in its system. Standard protocol, and it came back positive for cocaine. Hmm. Also ran a DNA test on it to find out if it was uh, 10% Ashkenazi Jew. Hmm. Uh, no, it was a 100% uh, serval cat, not a hybrid. And so I don't even know if they know whose cat it is because they're like, we didn't charge anybody because I don't know that they know who it is. But I guess they got to find out. So I wonder if you listen, zoos need every bit of marketing help they can get. And so I think you're right. If they say, hey, everybody, there's the cocaine cat. You'd have to tell your kids what that is. But the story behind it is one of the cat being saved. And you go, well, it's a, honey, how would we describe cocaine for little Timmy? Well, uh, Timmy, it's, uh, you know, back in the day when your mom and I just started hanging out, it was, well, I digress. Anyway, this cat, they found a little bit of this party powder in his bloodstream. But right down there in Cincinnati, boy, they're wilding down there, aren't they? They stay wilding down there in Cincinnati. I mean, they're right by Kentucky, so they're probably a little bleed over of that. And Indiana. All of it. Cincinnati border, Indiana. Yeah, it's got. It's right in the corner. Yeah. Is it? It's got I'm a terrible bit of Indiana geography. And mostly so. Kentucky. I was okay. gonna say their airport is in Kentucky. Hmm. They share it. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh, right by Indiana. Mm -hmm. Hey, look at you. I didn't say nothing to you. Why is my phone going off? I uh, no, I'm terrible <laughs> at geography, so I didn't know that that was. Right by Warsaw, Indiana. I know somebody from Warsaw, Indiana. <clears throat> oh, that's Warsaw, Kentucky. Sorry. But there is a Warsaw, Indiana. Anyway, the cocaine cat. They got it. It's fine. Nobody worry exactly. about it. Hey, golly, will you look at that? Get down here, everybody. It's a cocaine cat. <laughs> <laughs> mm <-hmm>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those are the kind of heartwarming stories that we need on a regular basis. It's a good Friday if you story ask me. for sure. I think so. Uh, can you imagine if somebody had accidentally eaten it on a Friday in Lent? Oh. Oh, the outcry. Is that oh. like a double sin because you ate meat and cocaine? I don't know if uh, cocaine is a sin. Double sin. Mm. I mean, the meat. They'd be madder about the meat. You go, well, it was, um, the meat got me really hopped up. But who knows what trouble could have befallen this animal had they not uh, found it. And then subsequently found out that it had uh, cocaine in there. The big cat expert said, I would rather deal with a tiger. I don't know what that means. That <clears throat> We really thought we had a leopard on our hands. But the cat either escaped uh, from an apartment or a car, they said. What if it wasn't even in a guy's apartment? What did they find out that it was just like in the trunk of a car? Then you have a trunk cocaine cat. <laughs> So I was almost positive that it was viral marketing for cocaine bear. I was like, there's no way it's a coincidence a cocaine bear is in theaters and now they have a cocaine cat. I thought for sure somebody was going to, you know how Kevin Hart and uh, Nick Cannon got one over on us? They fooled us? Oh, yeah, we, were all, we all took that bait. Oh, I was fooled. I was like, why didn't they wait till April <clears throat> Fool's? What's that? I don't understand why they didn't wait till April Fool's. Yeah, you, you got to strike while the iron's hot. That's not for four more weeks. What else is happening on April first? Oh, I will be headlining the Funny Stuff Comedy oh, Club. Oh, just the one Kyle night, Hope huh? Falls. Well, I'll be doing it on Friday night too, March thirty oh, first. Two nights. Yeah, tickets at BillSquare dot com. Two shows each night. Yes. There's nobody to know how many shows total that is. So go to FunnyStop dot com and uh, get your tickets. Michael Rappaport is here. He is, as the kids say, in the house. And he's doing uh, a bunch of shows, two tonight, two tomorrow night, at the Cleveland Improv. And so we'll chat with him when we return. 
I'll have those Scream 6 passes for you, too. Bill saw it, liked it. If you want to go, it opens in theaters everywhere today. And you can be in one of those uh, audiences to see Scream 6. So we'll do that coming back. 35192 on a text for anything else. You can watch live if you like at alancoxshow.com. The Alan Cox Show. On our free iHeartRadio app and your favorite smart device. Just tell it to play The Alan Cox Show on iHeartRadio. Get ready to celebrate your favorite podcasts at our iHeart Podcast Awards. Tune in as the best podcasts take home awards in categories like comedy, crime, pop culture, and more. Watch on iHeartRadio's YouTube channel and Facebook.